On Discord, Florian was wondering how to get a height field from Copernicus. Well, what if I told you it already is a height field? You just need to view it from a different perspective. So here I've got the result of a copnet, which just has a simple shape turned to mono. Now, I'm going to use a node called Primitive Properties to change my perspective on this volume. I'm going to go to Volumes and set the visualizer to Height Field, and now you've got a height field. But you'll notice that none of the normal height field nodes work on it, for example, height field noise. And the reason is just because this doesn't currently have a name, it's an unnamed volume. So I'll drop down a name node and call it Height. And now the noise is actually working on this volume, but it's a very small volume. So I'm going to use a height field transform to make it a little bit bigger. So I'll just set the uniform scale up a ton, maybe do a thousand. And now you can see it's literally working as a height field. So what the hell is going on here? The reason this works is because by default, a height field is a default native Houdini volume and it's a float volume. And what do you know, COPS also uses native float Houdini volumes. And the float part is quite important. For example, here, the reason this is a float volume is because I'm using SDF to mono, which means it's a grayscale or a one dimensional volume rather than something like a color volume, which is three or four dimensions. And because it's a four dimensional volume, I can't turn that into a height field because this is now giving me a VEC4 volume rather than a float volume. It's very easy to fix that. You just need to use whatever you want to mono. So in this case, it'd be RGB to mono. I'll plug that in here, set it to RGBA, and now we're getting a black and white version, which will be a one dimensional volume. And now that'll give me a valid height field. Now let's say you have multiple things you wanna export. For example, a color channel, a height channel, and some other random stuff. I suggest using something like a collect node and chucking everything you want into this node. So we have that, we have the mono, we have the SGF shape, and that'll give us a bunch of different volumes. And when you go outside the copnet, you just need to untick single output. And now you're getting a volume for each of those outputs. And all you need to do to turn one of them into a height field is blast away all of the volumes you don't want for example, in this case, I just want volume number one. And then you can do the same thing as before. So you do print properties, set that to height field. And of course you can do that for as many of these outputs as you want. Another method from Nicola D is using a blank height field and copying the data onto that height field. And you can do that using something like a height field layer node. So if you plug in the blank height field, plug in the cop network and set the mode to replace, the last thing you need to do is give it a name again. So again, I'll give it the name height. And also this needs to be the same size as the image. So I'll make it very small and set the grid spacing very low. And if I make it a little bit bigger, you can see that it is indeed copying the butterfly onto this height field, but it's not as fast as just using the volume directly. The final way I want to show you is using a wrangle. And this is probably the least efficient way to do it, but it's fun, so I'm going to show it anyway. So first, again, create a blank height field. And now I just want to copy the data from one of these volumes into the height field, but this time using a volume angle. Now I plug it in there, plug it in here. You can use this function called volume sample to get volume data from this cop net and dump it in the height field. So this height field is called height, which means I can type in F at height equals volume sample. The arguments are firstly the geometry index, which is going to be the first input of the wrangle one, then the volume name. In this case, I don't have volume names. I just have volume indexes zero, one, and two. So I'll add that as a channel thing, volume index. And then the final thing is the coordinate you want to sample, which is just going to be the position. And then I'll type that in, create a spare input. And you won't see an effect because again, this needs to be very small. So I'll need to set that very small, make the grid divisions very small. And now you can see just like before, it's copying that data. And I can even choose which particular volume I want. For example, this one here is the circle SDF. This one here is the image and the other one, the color. And another trick you can do instead of having to change the size of things, you can fit the position to the bounding box. So you never have to worry about mismatching sizes. So I'll make a new variable back to pause. And for that, I'm going to fit the position to the bounding box min of the first guy. 
and then the bounding box max, and then I'll repeat that for the second volume. So it's taking the bounding box and doing a map from one to the other, which means now I get a really good rescalable sort of thing. And the only real benefit with this is it works on non-float volumes. For example, my first output, I'll get rid of all this other stuff, my first output is this color volume. Even though it's a color volume, it still converts it properly because it's doing a typecast with the volume sample. So thank you for watching, and for more bullshit tips like this, check out my page Houdini Fun. It's now overflowing onto YouTube.